just as God created us with different races and different backgrounds and different classes, God also created us as competitive beings. It is in our human nature to want to compete. And when you look at the Quran and the prophetic traditions, the emphasis is not on removing competition, but rather why you're competing and how you're competing. And so if you start with the why, the ultimate competition that we have in this life is the competition of virtue, the competition for God's pleasure, the competition to live out our best potential. And so what does God tell us? To compete over prayer, to compete over charity. That doesn't mean seeking to demolish or destruct the prayer or the good deeds of anyone else. That means that you see other people in virtue and you too want to be virtuous. And so the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, mentions that there is no envy except in two things, a person who God gives knowledge and they spread that knowledge and a person who God gives wealth and they spend that wealth in the right way. They spend that wealth in charity. Now that obviously means that you want good for the person who spreads beneficial knowledge and you want good for the person that spends in charity, but you also want to be in a position where you too could be beneficial. So you're competing over charity. You're competing over virtue. You're competing over who can be the best servant of God and in the process can be the most beneficial to people because those two things are inherently linked. And that cannot be done without the perspective of the hereafter, without the perspective of a life beyond this life. And then the how you compete comes into play. This is when we're talking about good deeds and virtue, you don't seek the destruction of another person. You don't resort to anything unethical because your competition is one of virtue in the first place. Now, how does that relate to everything else that we have in Islam and everything else that we compete about in life? Everything else that we do is for a greater purpose, and so that competition is with greater ethic. You find that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, used to compete with his companions in wrestling, in racing. He used to even horse race with his wife, Aisha. May God be pleased with her. She talks about these uh, incidents in which even in the midst of an expedition, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, would send his companions ahead. And then he would race with his wife in such a lighthearted way. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, taught his companions archery and the virtue of archery. The companions used to compete in all sorts of healthy sports. And in their competition, you even find narrations of them holding their breath underwater to see who could hold their breath longer. In that competition, they all saw themselves as constantly, you know, seeking to be fit and constantly seeking to honor this trust that God has given them in their body. And so in the process, they never tainted their souls or their ultimate pursuits with this worldly competition. Rather, they showed the best of etiquettes towards one another, the best of ethics towards one another. You know, anger is often a symptom of something. And so when people become angry and they transgress the bounds in the midst of competition or in the midst of something, then Islam teaches us to go deeper and say, what provoked that anger? What provoked that type of a response? And so when you're in competition, or when you are in the process of engaging your brother or sister in some form of worldly sports, it's natural that you get invested in a game, you get invested in a competition, but the anger should not suggest that you have come out of the original frame of how you view competition and how you view each other in the first place. And so the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, teaches us that the greatest competition and the greatest sport is actually taming and disciplining the soul, disciplining the self. And so he says that the strong person is not the one that overcomes another person, but rather the one who controls themselves in the time of anger, that you're able to control and discipline yourself. And so you don't see yourself in competition with the other as much as you see yourself in competition with yourself to be the best version of yourself. Therefore, in the process of trying to overcome someone else, you're not going to lose yourself and lose your purpose and lose your perspective. And so compete in good deeds, compete with good manners, and don't lose the original perspective of why you're here in the first place.